What is denatured protein? The term denatured, followed by the word protein. What does that mean and what does it mean to you and me and anybody interested in uh, building, maintaining, um, rebuilding, repairing muscle tissue? Apparently there's a, a lot of misunderstanding, and misinterpretation here. I don't think it's misinterpretation, I think it's just flat out a lack of information. A flat out lack of understanding. Nobody researching anything. Who knows? But if you watch this video, you'll know something that apparently a whole lot of people you think should know don't. Okay. When you denature protein, and protein, a lot of things can denature protein. Heat is like usually the general main culprit for denaturing protein. And uh, all your food when you cook it, all your meats, all your proteins become denatured. If you cook above, what is it, 108 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. So, by the way, if you're processing at 110 degrees, you're denaturing protein. So when you cook your meat, when you cook your eggs, you know, whatever you're having, you're denaturing the protein. So is that a bad thing? No, it is not. It's actually a good thing. It can be a good thing. It's a good thing with foods because in denaturing that egg when you cooked it, you just made it more, you just upped the assimilation ratio percentage of that egg. You've just made that egg more digestible and more readily assimilable by cooking it, by denaturing the protein. That's why the egg actually feels firm, the white, when you cook it versus raw. That's what that's caused by. Uh, when you denature protein, you change the structure permanently, change the structure of the protein. You're actually just kind of changing the shape of the protein. Now, what's the benefit to that? What's the drawback? You think denatured protein is no more good? Wrong. It's not what it means at all. I don't even know where that came from. Um, denatured protein means that the outer bond has been broken on the amino acids that protein's already been broken down and so it doesn't have to be broken down in your stomach so it is absorbed more rapidly and more readily than protein that is not denatured so have you heard anything bad yet no you've just heard of an alternative something else you want something faster you want to speed up um assimilation time of some type of protein denatured is the way to go yeah, that would be like if you're going to eat your stuff raw or if you're going to eat it cooked that's a difference there now as far as protein supplements go you actually pay more money for denatured protein denatured protein is pricier because it's denatured and that's not like a secret or a trick by a manufacturer it's nothing that's hush hush if you're a wise consumer, then you know why you buy like hydrolyzed whey protein. You would know why. Why are you? But why would you want to buy hydrolyzed whey protein over whey isolate or over just whey concentrate? I think pretty much everybody understands that concentrate is going to have more than just protein in it. It's going to have less protein in it. Not a lot less, but yes, it has less protein in it. Like probably 72% or so of it is actually protein. Uh, the other, you have a little bit of carbohydrates, you have some lactose. If you're lactose intolerant, you don't want concentrate. You don't want regular whey. Uh, now, generally, what you would want is an isolate. An isolate has been filtered many more times. Uh, it's much more refined, and um, it has more protein in it, you know, uh, in, by volume. There's more protein, and you've gotten rid of all the lactose and all this other crap out of it. You have, like, 90 some percent of it is protein now compared to 70 some percent of it of your serving or whatever you're taking in now when you get into denatured protein denatured protein uh, like i said just means that it's already you know partially broken down so that uh, your stomach doesn't have to do that job it's considered somewhat pre-digested protein it's it's 
in many ways it's superior. In many ways it's superior. I buy hydrolyzed whey protein. It's the most expensive form of whey protein for that reason. It's desirable. Talk about do your research. You should do your research. Okay, so is egg a good source of protein? Sure, eggs an awesome source of protein. So is chicken. You know, so is fish. Um, as far as bioavailability, um, eggs number one, naturally occurring foods, I believe, which is great. But then there's whey, and even whey concentrate has uh, better bioavailability than egg. Whey isolate is even slightly better. Whey hydroslate is better. In my opinion, it's much better because uh, assimilation is improved because of the denaturing of the protein. Because that's what it is. It's what it does. It's why you do it. It's why you buy it like that. That's why it's marketed that way. That's the purpose it serves. That's the market. People that want that. So, Denature doesn't have anything to do with that the proteins are more good, your body can't use it. I don't even know where that originally started from. You know, one monkey says it and a dozen monkeys repeated it. And, you know, this one and that one and so on and so forth. It's not true at all. There's no truth to it. Um, you know, I buy denatured protein. That's what hydrolyzed, that's what hydroslate is. It's denatured protein. Whereas isolate and concentrate, I don't mess around with concentrate a whole lot very much. I don't buy it. Uh, isolate I do. Uh, isolate's fast enough. You know, hydros hydrolyzed way is just a little faster. And when you're talking about assimilation ratios and bioavailability, um, let's say you're going to have, you know, how much protein's in an egg white? Three grams? Roundabout, roughly. Okay, so how many of these egg whites do you need to get a decent serving of protein? And also consider that because all proteins aren't equal, you know, bioavailability wise, if you're going to have 30 grams of isolate and 30 grams of egg, how much of the 30 grams of the egg do you think actually makes it to the cellular level in your bloodstream and actually can get to the muscle for reparation? How much of that? All right, how much of the isolate do you think makes it? A, a good deal more of the isolate makes it. Okay, so if you wanted to get that much in your bloodstream at the muscle, and you only had 30 grams, 30 grams of isolate is gonna, you're gonna have more protein there. There's gonna be less waste. Now, if you wanted to have 10 egg whites, then you're gonna have 30 grams. But I can have, you know, a whole jug of isolate. I can buy the top of the line isolate that I use sometimes, that I have in there right now, for $40. And God knows how many servings are in that bastard. But each scoop is like 25 grams of protein. So if I throw two scoops in something, that's 50 grams of isolate. You understand? Okay, so do, why don't I buy egg protein? No, I don't buy it because I can eat eggs. Uh, why do I not buy beef protein? Because I could eat beef, but I don't eat red meat anymore. Why do I not buy casein? protein because it's in milk you know 70 some percent of the milk is casein i drink plenty of milk i enjoy milk i like milk you can say what you want about it i still drink it it's cheap it's effective it works you know so i can drink the milk but if i want whey isolate or even hydroslate i can't just go out and get that naturally i have to buy that as that formula you understand that has to, that's created, that has to be created from, from the food, right? From the cheese, to the whey, to the isolate, to the hydroslate. You understand? You can't, that doesn't occur naturally. So all those things that occur naturally, I can just get from the natural food. Now when I need a chunk of protein and I need it now, it's going to always be isolate. And that's why. So anyway, I hope this clears some things up with people. Denatured doesn't mean what you think it means. Uh, denatured, it more or less means predigested, roughly.
My God.